Hi, I'm Annie Botticelli, and this is the Storyteller Forecast for Pisces for April 2017. Go to my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, see what's new on my blog, check out my professional development courses. So what is going on in the month of April? We have ourselves still in this theme of retrograde energies, going back and in, wrapping up unfinished business. We've got lots of sweet aspects this month that we'll talk about. We've got some challenging aspects this month. But I want to talk first about some things specific for Pisces. This month I want to talk about, I'm going to talk about several things, but first I want to talk about um, something that we don't really address very often, which is the transiting north node. The transiting north node shows us where in our chart, where in our lives, there are keys to our highest expression and our happiness. So the North Node in the birth chart represents our highest expression in this lifetime. And when we look at the North Node in transit, it's a moving, evolving area of focus. When we focus on these things, it helps to lead us more into our individual purpose. So for early, middle, and late degree Pisces placements, you have very strong energy in the sixth house with this north node placement. The sixth house with the north node transiting there is basically telling us or telling y'all that organization, time management, and effective um, routines are the keys to your productivity. I mean, are the keys to your happiness and your productivity. There are so many things that go, excuse me, go on in the being of the Pisces energy. You know, it's a very internal, um, emotional energy. And when this North Node energy is moving through a very organized, regimented um, Earth energy, that helps to funnel all of that water into something that can hold it like Earth energy. So it, it works very nicely in sync with how you are. It's just a, a trait that is wanting to be developed for your happiness. So let's say you have a certain goal. What this North Node is saying is, this placement is saying at this point is, in order to reach that goal, it's very likely that you have to get more organized, that you have to be more productive, that you have to have a better system, that you have to have a better routine, or that you have to make changes in your current routine because it's not working. So, um, so organization is the key to your happiness right now. Early, middle, and late degree placements also have a very strong energy in the second house. And this is happening for different reasons depending on your placement. Early degree placements have the sun and Mercury there. Middle degree placements have Mercury and Mars. And late degree placements have Mars there. So regardless of what all is there for you, this energy of the second house coming up as a, as a focus is very, very relevant for all Pisces placements. The second house has to do with money. It has to do with earned income, your financial security, your financial picture, um, how you make the money, what you do with the money, how you value the money, you know, what, um, what your trade-offs are as far as what you're willing to um, exchange for your finances. So there's going to be a strong focus there for all of you. And this goes hand in hand with this, um, this key to happiness, I'm calling it, with this North Node transit because they're both in Earth energies. Virgo is an Earth energy. That's the sixth house. Um, the second house is this uh, Taurus Earth energy. So again, it's like what's being called for at this time for Pisces energy is to get grounded, is to get consistent, is to be productive, is to be you know, is to make lists and follow through, is to get help with how you can reach your goals in a more efficient way and how to even set goals um, if, that, if, if you're starting at that point. So these are um, some of the shorter term areas of focus for Pisces, but I wanna talk about a longer term transit and that is Saturn. Okay, because Saturn has been moving through the Pisces, and this is for early, middle degree, and 
most of you late degree placements, if you haven't already started this, you'll be feeling this very soon. This energy of Saturn moving through the 10th house. Saturn is the taskmaster. You know, it's the, the, the energy of wanting to get things done, of wanting to accomplish something, of wanting to get somewhere. And it only happens once every like 20 to 30 years that Saturn will start and, and have this two to three year movement through this place in your chart. And Saturn actually rules the 10th house. So it's happier there. But what it really wants you to do is to focus on your accomplishments in the outer realms. For people who were already in an established career, Saturn could have brought or could still be bringing questions or challenges to whether or not that's what you want to be doing. You know, some people who have been working very hard will have Saturn have a positive effect in the way that it brings you to recognition. You know, it can bring things to fruition. It can bring stuff that you've been working on for a while into a situation where it really gels and gets established. Anything involving Saturn involves something long term. So, um, some people will have a crisis with their work where they just decide, I can't do this anymore. Also, Saturn can affect your relationships with authority figures, including father, stepfathers, etc. So you might notice when Saturn's in the 10th house, might, some of you might, your dad or father figures might be having trouble or your bosses or people in that role for you. You could be holding space for them as they have some challenges or you could be working out challenges with them. A hidden um, energy in the backdrop of a Saturn transit through the 10th house is working out your issues with your father and working out your issues with authority. So a lot of times our imprints from, you know, our father figures from childhood are actually interfering with our success as adults. So kind of getting deeper into that question is something that is a long-term goal. I can't tell you how many people I've seen do one of the two following things, either excel and, and have their work blow up in this beautiful way where they get a massive amount of recognition and they get acknowledged for work they've done, or they start to have trouble with their work because their heart's not in it anymore or it's just time for a change. So if you're noticing this energy brewing or if it has been brewing, then Saturn wants you to, you know, Saturn is in the sign of Sagittarius right now. So it wants you to go really big. It wants you to ask really big questions. It wants you to put things in the bigger scheme of life. You know, a great question, a spiritual exercise that I like to suggest is if today you were on your deathbed and you're looking back at your life, specifically around your work, because that's what the field of experience we're talking about here, what would you do differently? And then start to do those things. You know, Saturn will help you to build a new life. Saturn will help you with the details and attract the, the um, resources that you need. But you have to be willing to ask the bigger questions and do the work to get to this different reality. So these are some of the things that I see specifically for Pisces at this time. And now I want to talk about this energy of wrapping up unfinished business. I want to talk about some sweet spots and challenging spots for the month of April how you can best use those energies. I'm calling the theme of April, the general astrology transits that will affect everyone. Wrap it up. We still have a major focus on retrograde energy. We've started, we started this theme in December of 2016 and every month until now, we've had a personal planet retrograde and or the shadow period of a personal planet retrograde. So, this idea of taking unfinished business and clearing it up so that when we move forward and we have these signs of moving forward, especially towards the end of April, when Mars gets into Gemini and the energy really starts to stir up, we'll have this feeling of where we're going, you know, this, this long awaited actual movement on an external level in the outer realms. But this month of April is a time to wrap it up. It's a time to resolve unfinished business. When I was planning these horoscopes, I was sitting um, one day in a place that had um, inspirational quotes flashing across the screen. And there was one that said, there's more to life than increasing its speed. And that was by Mahatma Gandhi. 
And I really, really liked that as something to mention for this month because the energy of retrograde is just the antidote to this over busy, over scheduled world. So the more we can take stock of things closer to home, take stock of internal events, you know, it's not that you can't say yes to opportunities that come in your external realms. Of course, it's fine to do things. Just know that new things that seem to come in in a retrograde time often will change their terms compared to what you agree to, or they might be shorter term than you anticipate. That doesn't have to be a problem. That doesn't mean you can't activate it. It's just an awareness to have. But as far as um, intentionally doing something, you know, it's, it just lends itself to shorter term contracts and it lends itself to wrapping up unfinished business. So we've got this theme that continues through April. Like I said, at the end of the month, you'll start to see things stirring up as far as like actual authentic outer movements coming soon. Um, so I want to talk about some of the aspects that are going to be relevant this month. I'm going to give you a list of some of them, but you can get a more complete list when you go to my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, and sign up for my free email newsletter. I do a write-up for the upcoming month, and I send that out a month early as well, to give you more details of days that have good energy, days that have challenging energy, and how to, you know, what you might expect with those things. But here's a more summarized list. We start out the month with a really great burst of energy with Mars in Taurus trining Pluto and Capricorn. Mars rules action and Pluto rules transformation. And a trine is the best aspect in astrology. So, you know, you might see something come in that, um, that could be notable, or you might use that time to try to get something done that's important. The same days, like April 5th, April 6th, Saturn's going to go retrograde. When an outer planet goes retrograde, there are different effects than when an inner planet goes retrograde because outer planets spend a very long period of time retrograde and inner planets, you know, the ones closer to us, they don't, they go retrograde um, in a different type of cycle. They're not retrograde as long as these outer planets. But in any case, when Saturn goes retrograde, I see it actually as getting a break from Saturn's chop busting. You know, Saturn is the disciplinarian, is the taskmaster. It wants you to do something, you know, to be on point, to step it up, to work really hard, to work smarter, to do all of this stuff, have all these lessons in the signs and houses that it's moving through. When it goes in retrograde, it actually eases up a little bit where your to-do list is more manageable, where you can integrate the lessons, where you get a break. So. I'm excited about the Saturn in retrograde um, for all of us. And that will be from around April 5th or 6th, depending on your time zone, until August 25th. Then we have on April 7th. Now I'm giving you the dates that these happen, but we can feel the effects of planetary transits before or after the actual day that they happen. So just be aware of that. So on April 7th, we have this yearly sun opposing Jupiter um, clash. And this time the sun is in Aries and Jupiter is in Libra. So this theme that we had quite a bit of last month through major outer planet connections, we have another little burst of this. So Aries is me, Libra is we. So it's like someone's individuality is conflicting with something in relationship or a relationship obligation or an opinion of someone you're in relationship with. So that could bring um, um, a moment, you know, in relationships where there's a clash there. On April 10th, we have the full moon and that's at 21 degrees of Libra. This full moon is going to be conjunct Jupiter and square Pluto. All of the planets, all of the signs, all of the placements have a potential to have positive or negative effects. Sometimes we think about Jupiter as having positive luck bringing effects and that can often be true. When Jupiter is sitting next to something else, like an event like a full moon, it amplifies it. Full moons are intense already. So the completion, the fruition, the, you know, something coming to be in the areas of Libra might be more intense or more expanded. So something notable with relationship. Um, 
something, you know, someone coming to an agreement, something coming to a closure and some sort of um, something with an in interpersonal relationship will probably be the theme there. And the square to Pluto usually means that there's some sort of, you know, person with some control or entity with some control that is not making the situation easier. You know, usually some sort of force that just seems like it's working against you. So I always like to leave a little room around the full moons because they're often emotional and you might want to have the space to tend to whatever comes up there, whether it's a great positive thing coming to fruition that you want to be present for, or whether it's a challenge that's going to be emotional and you'll need a little time to recover. I think it's a good idea to leave some space around that full moon, which is on April 10th. On April 16th, there is a nice angle between Venus and Pisces and Mars and Taurus that could bring resolutions and relationships. So it's possible that that full moon accentuates this issue and that maybe this Venus-Mars aspect could bring some sort of accord back into the picture. On April 17th, there's a beautiful angle between the Sun, which is in Aries, and um, Saturn, which is in Sagittarius. So this could bring a boost to long-term goals or something that you've been working on for a while. Um, some sort of positive energy there. And then on April 19th or the 20th, depending on where you are, the Sun in Aries is conjunct Mercury. Now, the energy, or actually by then it's in Taurus. So it's the Sun in Taurus conjunct Mercury. So this is going to bring a dose of realism and or a dose of productivity. You know, whenever planets get together, they have an amplified effect. Sometimes the effects can be a positive experience, sometimes the effects can be a negative experience. The sun amplifies Mercury as communication or information or news. So um, so I see it as a realism or productive, you know, something bringing productivity around that time. Then on April 21st and the days around there, especially watch your security, security on all levels and other private and personal information because Venus in Pisces is going to square Saturn and Sag and Saturn can bring some hard lessons and want some details attended to. And Venus rules money and love. And Pisces is stuff kind of going on in the backdrop. So just, you know, be cautious of your personal things in the backdrop, um, especially around that time. Then on April 24th, we have Mercury and Aries making this beautiful aspect to Saturn and Sag, just like the sun did a few days before. So this can bring in good news or long um more boosts to long-term goals there are some themes that i'm seeing a theme that i'm seeing this month uh, because of these a lot of pretty nice saturn aspects are these boosts to long-term goals now even though we're in the midst of something you know this retrograde energy that's kind of like a short-term energy or a going backwards energy but if you've been working over this time to see to details in the backdrop you might see these saturn aspects really start to light light up showing the work that you've done is actually getting somewhere. On or around the 26th, you'll feel that new moon energy and that's going to be at six degrees of Taurus. New moons are times to make wishes. You can check out my video making um, wishes come true. If you just search for Annie making wishes come true, you can learn more about how you can use these new moon energies. But basically you get 10 wishes at each new moon and the more you align your wishes to the energies of the sign that the moon is in, the more easily the universe can bring those wishes into fruition. I also have a blog up on my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com called Making Powerful New Moon in Taurus Wishes that you can use specifically for this moon on the 26th. So Taurus energy rules um, money, finances, self-sufficiency, um, connectedness to earth or um, eco-friendly types of things, you know, earth sustainability projects, um, also values. So anything along those lines will get a, a bigger boost when you wish for them around this time. Then around the 28th, and it's very close to this new moon energy, enough so that they, these energies could blend together, you could have electrifying experiences or information come in because Mercury is conjunct Uranus. And this is happening in Aries. So you really, anytime you have something involving Uranus, you gotta look out for surprises. When it's in Aries, which it has been and it's going to be for a while, you have to guard your physicality, especially your head. 
So, you know, something, you moving along and something bumping your head. The odds of that are increased during that time, so just um, watch yourself. Now, the odds are just as likely as information will bonk into your head, you know, as, as opposed to the literal um, hitting into your head. You know, insights, sudden insights and breakthroughs. It's a really great time for brainstorming. Whenever I see aspects like this with Uranus, I really love it for brainstorming on any topic. Then we close out the month, April 30th, with this energy of Saturn and Sagittarius with Chiron and Pisces. Chiron is the wounded healer. It's an asteroid that really shows us how we have deep levels of woundedness and how that shows up in our lives and how we can make our weakest link become a blessing and a major strength in our lives. So at this time, uh, there could be opportunities for great forgiveness to occur of self and others um, and trans transcending the issue of feeling like um, a victim. So these are the things that are most on my mind for the general astrology for the month of April. Definitely go to my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, where you can see more about my professional development courses. You can keep track of the registration for my astrology apprenticeship program, my coach certification and online business course. If you'd love to be a professional coach, help people reach their goals, that is one of the things I'm really good at and I love to teach people how to help other people to do that. You can check that out. And I also teach my Creating Successful Online Business course if you would like to bring your business online and be free of your geography. So sign up for my email newsletter to get my monthly report See what's new on my blog at AnnieHelpsYou.com. Have a wonderful month, and I'll see you next month. Bye.